The Warriors Dynasty is over. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Nick from Rise of Sports, and I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about why the Warriors Dynasty is over. So, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and kind of give my take of why I think this Warriors team, who has been so great for so many years now, I think their best days are behind them, and I think their best days just ended after they won the NBA championship this year. So what I have pulled up here is the Warriors salary payroll for their team. And this is my biggest argument to why I, I believe the dynasty is over. I also will talk about a couple other things in this video. But let's first look at this. Let's look at this first column or the second column, the age. Steph Curry is 34. Clay Thompson, 32. Wiggins, 27. Draymond, 32. And then you look at a lot of young guys. You have James Wiseman, who's 21, Kevon Lewis, 26, Kaminga, 19, Devin Chichos, 25, Jordan Poole, 23, Moody, 20, Patrick Baldwin, 19. And the rest of their guys are either on minimum salaries or just kind of two-way contracts, it looks like. So, But look at this team totals. The team totals for this next upcoming year is $185 million. Now, I'm not exactly sure... What the cap is, I think. So the salary cap here, it says, is $123 million, and they are at $185 million. So they are about $62 million over the cap. <laughs> so that is insane. So they, I mean, obviously, if you have an owner in the NBA who is willing to go into that luxury tax and pay that premium, then, you know, it's fine. But when you're $62 million over that cap, that is unbelievable. And that just, to me, is not sustainable. When you look and you see next year, you're guaranteed $160 million for guys on your books right now. That's not even players that you're going to draft or that you're going to sign in free agency, guys that you're going to bring back. That doesn't include any of that. And then obviously in 2024, 2025, and then the next year, it's kind of like 80 and then 64 because you only have what five guys that are guaranteed in 2025, 2024, and then two guys that are guaranteed in 2026, which that's if you pick up Patrick Baldwin's um, rookie deal. The only other guy you have on roster is Steph Curry at that point. But this first column to me is wild. Or Sorry, I keep saying it's the first. The third column I think is wild how you have this here. Because that is a ton of money you're guaranteeing players. And to me, when I look at this, the first thing I wanted you, you all to see was the age. Because Steph Curry is 34. Yes, he's you know arguably the best player in the NBA right now. And so I think that's he's the oldest player on their team. But he's also the best player. And I don't see him slowing down. The, I would see him slowing down maybe in these couple years right here where you're owing him 55, 59 million, which is a ton. But at that point, you know, he's kind of kind of washed up at that point. It's what I think. I think he'll play good for two more years and then kind of be done. But then you look at Clay. He's 32. He came off two major leg league in, league, two major leg injuries and back to back seasons. He is owed $40 million and $43 million over the next two seasons. Clay in the playoffs, I don't know if you saw, he didn't look very good to me. I mean, he he did what he could, and but you definitely saw him not show up on the defensive end. He just wasn't how he used to be. And I think when you had two major leg injuries, that's kind of understandable. But you owe him $40 million and $43 million. Andrew Wiggins... Um, he's guaranteed this next season he'll be back on a $33 million deal. That's a lot of money right there. And then you don't have him guaranteed at all after that. So you have $33 million, $40 million, $48. I'm not super great at quick math, but that's around $130, $131 million guaranteed between those three players. The salary cap is $123. And those three players by themselves are over the salary cap. You have three guys, and if you just take out Andrew Wiggins and put in Draymond, that is right around the salary cap by three guys. To me, that's a little crazy. 
So yeah, let's move on to Draymond. He's 32. He doesn't look like he is like, you know, slowing down tremendously, but you could imagine after one more year, I think he will be kind of at the end of his rope. You know, he looked great in these playoffs, but I just think he's kind of at the end. And the ones uh, in green here, the numbers in green are player options. So they have an option to take that money or they can leave and enter free agency. So, but he's owed $25 million next year. And then after that, will he stick around? Will he take that player option? If he does take that player option and they keep Clay, let's say that happens, that's 51, 43, it's 94, plus 27 is 121, I think. If I'm doing that right, I think I'm doing that right. 121 million guaranteed between. So if he takes that player option, that's 121 million. Let's say you lose the Wiggins, right? It's 121 million. That's right at the salary cap. It'll probably increase a little bit, so you'll be a little under that salary cap with that. So you have that at that point. You will have a 35 year old Steph Curry, a 33 year old Clay Thompson, and a 33 year old Draymond Green taking up almost all your salary cap. That doesn't look super great, especially because those are three players. <laughs> obviously, the, the Warriors have been okay to go over the salary cap, so you obviously have probably you know $60 million to fill out the rest of your team if you're going with what the salary cap will be then. Well, let's move on. James Wiseman did not play at all last year, and you don't really know what you're going to get from him. You're talking about the number two pick, which means he's going to get a lot of money guaranteed. He still has these two years left, guaranteed nine million and twelve. Kevon Looney, you have him on a pretty friendly deal. He's 26. He's a guy who can be in a trade possibly if you want to get rid of him. He's been good. Like he was very good for them in the playoffs. Just kind of he was kind of the only big man they had, and so that's kind of why he I think he shined. But you have him, Kuminga. And Jordan Poole, well, hold on. I'll say Kuminga and Moses Moody. Those guys are guys that you can keep around. Um, those guys will be on your team for a while because you have this next year, and then you have you can pick up their rookie deal, and then you can keep that for two years, and then you can give them a rookie extension to keep them around even longer. So that, I think, is fine. Patrick Baldwin, same thing. You just drafted him. Don't have to worry. So you have those guys on roster for right now. With Patrick Baldwin, Kuminga, and Moses Moody. Jordan Poole is the biggest kind of reason of this video, to be honest. Jordan Poole is 23. He has one more year, this final year on his deal. And then he is going to want to get paid. Jordan Poole played amazing last year. He looked like an all-star. He is going to want a ton of money, and I highly doubt he'll take anything less than you know a max deal. I think he's going to want a max deal after this. Will the Warriors give it to him? Well, the one issue you're going to run into is Andrew Wiggins. What are you going to do with him? He was arguably an MVP in the finals last year. I believe you could have given him the finals MVP. And then you have Draymond Green, who has a player option. What if he opts in? That makes it really awkward. If he if Draymond opts in, then you're going to have to basically be decide between Wiggins and Jordan Poole. Like, you just can't bring that back. You have $160 million guaranteed. That This is all guaranteed right here. If Draymond opts in, I don't think that counts Draymond's. If I'm just doing math really quickly, I don't think... Maybe it does. Maybe that includes Draymond. So if Draymond opts in, you're at $160 million, And then you have Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. Andrew Wiggins is going to want a lot of money. He's going to probably want $30 million. Jordan Poole is going to probably want $30 million. If you add that up, that is $60 more million, which would put you at $220 million. I'm not sure what the hard cap is, but that would be really close to what that hard cap is, if not over the hard cap, which you I don't think you can have over the hard cap. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure there's a certain like luxury tax hard cap that you can't go over, and I think that would probably be over. So you're going to have to basically pick between one. You could go to $190 million potentially. Sorry for that. Um, you could potentially go over that, but you're really not going to want... You're going to have to decide. That's if Draymond picks up his option. You're going to have to decide between Wiggins and Poole. Okay? So let's say they pick Poole and you lose Wiggins. Then you have a lineup. You have Curry, Clay, Poole, probably. And then you might have Draymond and Wiseman. 
pretty good team, right? And then on the bench, you might have, you might still have Looney. You have Kuminga, DiVincenzo, Moody, and Baldwin. Pretty good team, right? So that's in 2023, 2024. That's a pretty good team. With Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond aging, though, and then Jordan Poole is not known as a big defender. Draymond's probably going to lose a step on defense. Clay's probably going to lose even more of a step on defense. Kuminga probably will be your best defender at that point. He looks like he can be a pretty good defender. Who knows what Patrick Baldwin will bring? Who knows what Moses Booty will, you know, be in the future? And this is without adding anybody else. This is basically saying you're going to have Curry. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is your ten. You can't really afford anybody else. You got to have rookie, rookie deals, and you got to have two-way contracts after that. And minimum salary guys. So you might be able to bring some minimum guys in. That is basically 2022 and then the 2023, 2024 season. That is what you're looking at for those two years. So this next year, I could see the Warriors making another run. But I think this next year is their last year. If you look past that, you're going to have to bring either Andrew Wiggins back or Jordan Poole. You're going to have to pick. Unless Draymond leaves. If Draymond decides to leave then you're going to have that open up and you might be able to bring back both. But still, if you're having that that team, I'm not sure if it's good because I don't know that the Warriors would want to spend all that money. I, I mean, maybe they would and maybe that would that would be your best bet. If Draymond, honestly, if Draymond leaves and you bring back Wiggins and Poole, if you can do that, that would be your best chance for a Warriors fan to potentially win another championship. So that is basically why this video was made because I think I just don't think the Warriors can do it anymore. I think they're the money is catching up to them, and I don't think they're going to be able to afford these guys for very much longer. If you move on, so that is the next two years. I could see them making a run next year, and in 2023, 2024, it's all going to depend on Draymond and what he decides to do. He's really he's been the anchor of this team. So if he decides to lead, you're not going to have that anchor anymore. You're going to have to rely on Andrew Wiggins, who's a good bet. I mean, he's a really good defender. I think he can do it. But then you're going to have to see is Poole going to want to leave? Is he going to want to try to go to a different team and lead another team? Or is he going to want to stay? Even Chenjo, another thing, he has a player option. He might decide to leave. That's one less role player you have. So that's kind of, and then James Wiseman also, are you going to extend him? Is the Warriors going to extend him? He might want upwards of $20 million. So there's a lot of questions there with that. And then in 2024, 2025, you are a 36 year old Steph Curry, $55 million. I don't know about you, but I don't think he will still be what he is right now at 36 years old. I just don't Clay Thompson. You're going to have to pay him then. What, let's say you bring back Andrew Wiggins. He might be on a massive deal. He might be being owed $40 million. If Draymond's still there, he's going to have a lot. He's going to have a big salary. So most likely in 2024, you're going to have one. I'm going to say you might have two of these four guys right here. So let's say if it's Steph, Clay, and Andrew Wiggins. And you would, let's, no, let's say, let's say you have Steph, Clay, and Wiseman. Okay. You're going to have a 36-year-old Steph. You're going to have a 34-year-old Clay, And you're going to have Wiseman. And then you're going to have maybe Kavon Ludi. Let's say Kuminga is still there. Let's even say Jordan Poole is still there. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson are going to lose a step for sure. And then you have a bunch of young guys who who knows how they're going to be and who knows what the league is going to look like at that time. And then you owe a 37-year-old Steph Curry $59 million. That's a ton of money right there for a 37-year-old Steph Curry. And then you have, I doubt Clay would be there at that point. You might still have Clay there. Maybe you'll have Andrew. It's a big like question mark. Draymond, I highly doubt will be there. And then maybe you'll have all these young guys. I mean, at this point, Kuminga would be like, what, 24? And then you or 23, and then you'd have Wiseman who's like 24. Like you, you're gonna have a good young core at that point. If Jordan Poole stays. Moses Moody stays like you're gonna have a good young core at that point. Like I think the Warriors for the future are really good. But what I'm saying right now, the whole point I made this video is the Warriors dynasty that we know from the past five, six years, I think it's over. I think this next year is the last possible chance you're gonna have. Because after that, you owe too much money to too many guys 
for it to work. I mean, like I said, you're going to probably have one or two of Andrew Wiggins, Draymond, and Jordan Poole. You're going to have to pick. And if I'm the Warriors, I pick Jordan Poole out of that, but that really hurts your defense. I mean, big time hurts your your perimeter defense because Clay's going to definitely lose a step on defense. Jordan Poole is not much of a defender, and you don't have a lot of wings. You have Kuminga is kind of your biggest guy. You're going to have to hope on Patrick Baldwin. Your defense is going to take a huge step back, and who knows? It really all depends on how Curry and Tom and Clay how they how their injuries and how their you know bodies hold up. So that's kind of why I made this video. I just think the Warriors have this one last year to make a run at it. But I think after that, they're done. And I think the Warriors dynasty is over. So if you have any comments, concerns about what I said, I guess not concerns. If you have any comments about what I said, you think I'm right or you think I'm wrong, let me know because I'd love to chat with y'all. Um, this is coming from a Rockets fan, so I don't like the Warriors, but I tried to give y'all the best explanation I could as to why, how I think it could work and how I think, you know, the Warriors still could be potential finals contenders in the next couple of years. But after the 2023, 2024 season, I just don't see how you're going to contend with this Warriors team as we know it. Cause I don't see pool or Moses Moody or Baldwin or Kuminga. I don't see them being that generational talent that I think you need to win a championship. I just don't. I mean, if you look at all the championships, you have generational talents on those championship teams with LeBron, with Kawhi, with, with Curry, you know, I mean, all of those teams have had, and I think Jason Tatum will be eventually a generational type talent. I just, I don't know. I just don't think you're going to have that. Once Curry leaves, I think this, the ship kind of sailed you you have a good young core, but you know, a lot of teams have good young core. So I just don't know. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this is probably a long video, but thanks for sticking with me. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next Rise Up Sports.